Hello, Dr. Mike and Ziegler here with Ziegler Chiropractic, and welcome to our workshop of health hacks. And before we dive into the topic tonight, you know, the reason that these are available to you and are a part of your care is that I want you to be a more informed consumer. I want you to be your own health advocate. And when you know and are equipped with information that support your daily choices, right? You are going to be a better critical thinker. You're going to be making better choices as it relates to health, right? If this is the spectrum of health and disease, right? You're gonna be making more choices that put you over in this realm. My goal for you is that a year from now, five years from now, 20 years from now, you are making healthier decisions you have a healthier foundation and structure, and you are living a vibrant life because that is what we are meant to live and experience is vibrancy. That is normal health. And that is why I do these workshops. And so diving into health hacks, right? What is a hack? Well, a hack is simply put a shortcut. And why not? You know, why not? have a shortcut to a healthier body, you know, less effort with bigger turnaround. We can, you know, have shortcuts that um, exponentially create growth and health and well-being. Why not do that, right? If we went on a run earlier today, even hours later, we're still burning calories. We still have a higher, you know, basic metabolic rate that allows us to burn energy longer, right? We're going to sleep better and we're going to be digesting our food better. That's a health hack, right? You do and participate in an activity and it pays dividends in the end. So that's what tonight's workshop is about is how can you create hacks during your day that are going to be supporting health and well-being? So let's dive in here. Now, when you look at any type of <clears throat> life planning vision planning, uh, a lot of times there's specific territories or categories in which life can fall into where you can do vision planning, right? You've got family, you've got work and professional life, you've got spirituality, you've got body and physical health, you've got your financial health, right? Those are life territories. So how I've broken down health hacks for you today is really five territories. When we talk about fitness, physical health, we talk about the financial health, um, we talk about our food and nutrition. Of course, we talk about chiropractic <clears throat> and the health of your brain and nervous system. And we talk about your happiness or your joy, you know, the lens in which you're viewing the world. All of these have uh, within their categories things that you can do on a daily basis that will exponentially grow your health. Um, and so where I want to start is your chiropractic, you know, <clears throat> this is the ultimate health hack. And we look at the power that created life. The first evidence that there was life was the existence of your brain and spinal cord, your nervous system. I mean, healthcare would be so much better in the world, so much less expensive if people were logical. You know, if the first thing that is developed embryologically is your brain and nervous system, your spinal cord, and the first thing we did to care for ourselves on a daily basis and in life was to take care of our spine, our brain, our spinal cord, <clears throat> then in everything we do, everything would be uplifted, which would be truly amazing. So chiropractic is the first and ultimate health hack because when you support a healthier brain and nervous system, you're supporting all things, right? A tide doesn't lift one ship, it lifts all ships. So when you start getting your brain and nervous system on board, any other thing you're doing health-wise is exponentially increased and improved and better integrated because your brain is on board, which is a big deal. So, <clears throat> right, when we talk about healthy 
spine, healthy brain, right? What do we know? We know that this, right? This is for brain health, for structural health. We know that this sitting up straight, ready to receive the world, we know that this is health. So for those of you who are getting chiropractic care, I first love and appreciate your choice to invest in your health and your body because not a lot of people are choosing to invest and make the choices that are truly virtuous and commit to a level of time, frequency, intensity uh, to show up and better themselves on a regular basis. And when you're looking at you know, health hacks as it relates to your chiropractic care, the best time to get adjusted is early in the day, right away in the morning. Starting off your morning with the right mindset and the right structure and the right connection, right? A clear connection between brain and body sets you up for success. Uh, one of my favorite pieces of research that I share in the office is uh, out of New Zealand or Australia, uh, Heidi Havoc um, provided some research in the last couple of years and they did brain scans of uh, chiropractic patients before and after an adjustment. And they found that on average, okay, patients had uh, their prefrontal cortex, so their executive function, 20% uh, increased activity in that prefrontal cortex. Now, prefrontal cortex, executive function, what is that? Goal-oriented tasks, focus, concentration, memory, um, ability to make decisions, emotional regulation, how we interpreted and perceived pain, how we manage and respond to stress. So, we see increase of 20% activity in that prefrontal cortex. Guess what? You're improving all of those things. When you get adjusted right away in your day, you're setting yourself up for success to be a more productive um, individual, uh, more on point and more connected. So that's one of the things that I recommend is best time to get adjusted is right away at the start of your day. And you know, they say, look at your five closest friends. You are a mirror of your five closest friends, right? They look, financially, they look at what is the average of your five closest friends? That's likely what you're going to be making. Uh, what is the average of health choices that your five cl closest friends are making? What are they doing to care for their body? That is a reflection of you. So, it's important for you to have the people who are close to you making similar decisions to support their health and well-being, right? If you want to experience vitality and vibrancy uh, five, 10 years from now, guess what? Let's get your family and friends on board to make those same decisions uh, that will support health and well-being for years to come, right? So it's fun. And then it helps with accountability and support of your consistency of making the most right decisions for you and your body. Uh, another thing is drink lots of water. Okay, we live in Colorado. We are a mile up at sea level. We're told drink half of your uh, body weight in ounces. We're a mile up, it's drier here. I would argue, you know, we're going to need more water and we wanna retain that water. So I've been sharing with some people, you may need to add some salt to your water in the morning, but it's best to start your day with drinking eight ounces of water and then stay hydrated throughout your day. Because guess what? If you're dehydrated, your brain and body are going to pull from areas of hydration, which they pull from discs in the spine. So that causes compression and stress to the spine. So when you stay hydrated, you equip your discs within your spine to optimally function. Now we talk a lot about spinal hygiene and stretches in our office. Uh, a chiropractic hack, when you get healthy movement into your spine on a daily basis, frequently throughout your day, that's going to be your best bet. So do spinal stretches every day, right? I like this, eat only on days when you do spinal stretches, right? Weed every day. Sometimes, you know, for people, it's 
like really important. I like to know the night before what's for breakfast. Is that prepped and ready to go? Um, so if we are in tune with the importance of movement of our body, as we are as in tune with the food we're eating, chances are our body and our spine is going to get the appropriate type of stretching, flexibility, and motion and movement that it needs. I find that <clears throat> I hear this a lot from patients. I wish I knew what I know now. I wish I knew it then because maybe then I wouldn't be experiencing X, Y, Z. Maybe then I wouldn't have the degenerative disc disease. Maybe then I wouldn't be so inflexible or have chronic pain or headaches or wouldn't have to be so invested in the time component required to recover and rehabilitate from the years of stress. So <clears throat> I challenge you who do you know that needs to know what you know that doesn't, right? Because if we could have caught you earlier, what could your health and vitality be today versus those years of life and stress where, that brought you into the office? So there are so many benefits to getting your spine checked. And again, people don't need to sign on for care. They don't need to choose chiropractic, but when they do understand the importance of getting their spine checked, um, at least they have the choice. And for some of you in your report of findings, I told you, you are going to be taking care of your spine differently for the rest of your life. At least I hope you'll choose to. Um, taking care of your spine is just like brushing your teeth, right? It is something that you will need to invest in forever, right? As long as you wanna be healthy, you want to experience um, vitality, having a healthy, movable, pliable, flexible spine is valuable because it's protecting and housing our brain. And, you know, the brain is king. <laughs> um, it is what, you know, was, um, it's where life started. And so brain is in control of everything. And so when you commit to taking care of your spine for life, um, you know, you're committing to a level of vibrancy and setting your trajectory to experience things. So that is really the health hacks as it relates to chiropractic. Next is the movement piece. So how can you support healthy movement uh, and find shortcuts where it will support you? So one of the big things is just being consistent with your routine, right? If you set up a schedule where you know, this is how long it takes me to do X, Y, Z. This is, I know movement is vitally important and I want to get that movement in, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. It's setting up your schedule for success, right? Um, <clears throat> and so the more consistent you are, the more it becomes a, wired routine and a wired behavior. And then that just becomes a streamline. It just becomes a part of your life. So, you know, what is a part of consistent routine? That is you're getting adjusted. That is healthy movement into the spine, right? You think about whole body workout. Well, think about adjustments as healthy movement into each joint of the spine, right? exercising, praying, those are all wonderful, uh, consistent routines you can get into, all have great benefits. But when we talk about exercise, I actually like to see that when you listen to music while exercising, it can cure boredom, it can improve your performance, it can help with motivation, and it keeps you focused. It reduces distraction. So just by adding music to your run, you can improve lots of different pieces um, to that exercise. And again, this is key. We talked about in chiropractic, your chiropractic care, but also with your workouts is having an accountability buddy, right? Work out with somebody. Not only does it add accountability, but it provides a level of encouragement and fun, right? Some people get competitive, uh, will push each other, will challenge each other for uh, more, right? more consistency of routine and care, 
uh, more consistency in terms of making healthier choices. So find the right uh, accountability buddy when it comes to your fitness. And, you know, not necessarily somebody who you need to be working out with every day, but somebody who's going to hold you accountable, say, okay, we're working out tomorrow. Um, maybe we're not together, but we're checking in with each other to say, did you do the workout? Right. So um, that can be really wonderful. You know, Seinfeld, you know, my husband's a big Seinfeld fan, um, but he used the red X method. I think he was a prominent or primary visual, you know, in terms of visual, auditory, kinesthetic, you know, what is the learning behavior that we learn most in. Uh, he wanted to become a, a better comic every day. So he, or he wanted to become a better comic. So every day he was um, desiring to write new material. So he'd put a red X on his calendar, which would help him visually see for more, right? And every time he didn't see an X on the calendar, it means he didn't do um, that consistency to write more jokes. So, you know, he'd write a red X. So is there something like that for you where you need to see, um, you know, that consistency that you're building on uh, that will keep you motivated and compel you to do more? And I think it's finding solutions that support consistent daily exercises, right? If you are working out at home, do you have an environment to work out in? Have you created space for that? You know, do you have a yoga mat or do you have weights or you know, do you have areas set up for you to just go right there and work out? You know, I have a friend who likes to work out in the morning, but in order for him to stay on a consistent schedule of working out, he needs to wear his gym clothes to bed. And he sets his shoes up, it, it makes me laugh. He sets his shoes up right by the door and he pulls the tongue out of his tennis shoes. So he doesn't have to deal with like, you know, tight shoes and having to worry about lacing up the, or loosening the laces, but he sets everything up. So he knows his alarm goes off. He's already dressed to go. He has his few things he needs to do like brush his teeth and put a jacket on and out the door, slips his shoes right in slips the shoes right on. So what are the solutions to being consistent in your daily exercise, right? Do you need to set yourself up for success where you are going to bed in your workout gear, right? Um, we do and talk about a lot of curve correction using dental rolls or fulcrums. Um, and I have people who keep their dental rolls right beside the nightstand. They see, oh, there's my dental roll. I need to do my exercise or do my curve, curve work right before I go to bed or right when I get up in the morning. So do you create a home environment for those triggers so that you know you see that you're going to do that, right? So create space for, for that activity. Um, and I think, I mean, being outside has its many benefits, uh, not just physically, but also mentally. So, I mean, how can you get outside more and how can you move your body more? Um, you know, going out on uh, a walk over the lunch hour or doing walking meetings or take your dog for a walk, right? Uh, there are those cues that can get us out and about where we can just move our body, right? If we are given the chance to either take the escalator or the stairs, take the stairs. Um, if we're driving to a parking, you know, driving to a store, park in the furthest place away. So you have to walk more. So choose to walk more and be more active versus using the things that are easier for us to get around, um, but we don't need to. Because every bit counts in terms of our fitness and our health. Everything is cumulative in nature. The more choices we make, again, move us towards health and well-being and vitality. And even if that is spending extra 20 minutes a day walking, those 20 minutes build up every day over time. And at the end of the year, that's 365 days of 20 minutes of walking. That builds up, right? And then as most of us are, we work at a workstation. And one of the best things you can do is get a standing desk. Sitting is 
the new smoking for a reason. It is detrimental to our health. So if you can stand at work, you are already heads and shoulders above um, you know, those who aren't. And to make it fun, you can add a Fitbit, use your Apple Watch um, and make it a game. How long can you stand or how many posture are you consistent with your posture interruptions and how many spinal hygiene movements can you get during your day, right? So again, when it comes to fitness and movement, it takes preparation to create a space to work out and move during your day. Um, but it can be done. Uh, back to this. As we're talking about a lot of these pieces, um, I think that if you try and do all of them at once, it can be overwhelming. Overwhelming so much so that we just decide, you know what, I'm done. I'm not even gonna do any of this. Well, I don't want you to do that. And that's where the magic of one comes into play. I just want you to pick one thing, one thing that you think you can do to and do it consistently because when you do that for 30, 60, 90 days, it becomes a habit and doing another thing is really no big deal, right? You're consistently getting chiropractic care, right? So maybe this one is no big deal. Consistently getting chiropractic care, you start your day with eight ounces of water, you know, and you are doing your spinal hygiene. Guess what? You're already doing some great things. What is the next one thing you can add into um, your day that would be a health hack to supports your overall health and well-being, right? I think this is a big one, happiness. So with the continuation of 2020 and just, you know, the tendency towards isolation and, and not being able to be around your community, we're seeing a real impact with uh, happiness and our mental health and well-being. And so I think this would be a really valuable category for you to uh, choose to do a health hack with. Uh, our expansion cycle is themed gratitude uh, to start the year because there's so many great things when it comes to experiencing the world through a lens of gratitude. And we are doing a gratitude challenge right now and we are writing out gas cards and the idea behind gas cards is to start your day off in gratitude and create specific action items to support your um, movement towards your health goals and keeping in mind, how can I serve others? So uh, in terms of starting your day off right with a healthy mental state is doing a gas card. And that's just taking you know, an index card and separating the three columns, G, A, S, G are all of your gratitudes. A are, you know, one, two, or excuse me, three to five action items that will move you towards your overall goals. And S is service. What can you do to serve others today, right? Maybe it's writing a testimonial. Maybe it's calling your grandma. Maybe it's writing a note. Maybe it's, you know, cooking somebody dinner and delivering it to them, whatever it may be. Gas cards are a great way to start your day off. And I share my gas cards with, you know, tons of chiropractors all across the U.S. I share my gas cards with some patients in this practice who are choosing to do the challenge with me. Um, but when we start reading each other's gratitudes and we start seeing what each other are doing throughout their day and how they're serving others through a secret acts of service, it can be really uplifting. I also love the idea of, again, something easy you can do that has health benefits is just by showering before bed, it can lower your body temperature, it can slow your metabolic function and heart rate, slows breathing and digestion. It prepares you for rest and recovery and sleep is so vital and important um, to recover from a day full of work and lower body temperatures associated with sleeping better. And I think they say around the 68 degree mark is the best, one of the better temperatures to be sleeping at um, because it's cooler and you sleep better. 
you'll like this one, eat dark chocolate. Yeah, chocolate makes me happy. Um, but when you eat dark chocolate, it helps regulate your stress hormone, hormone cortisol. Um, <clears throat> and another thing that reduces cortisol levels is chewing gum, which is really easy. Uh, even if you put it in for 10 minutes and then you know, spit it out. But chewing gum can be really wonderful in terms of regulating and managing the stress hormone cortisol. Happiness, spending time outside, being outdoors can make uh, a huge impact on our overall mental well-being. So 15, day, 15 minutes a day is linked to better mental health. And do it between 10 and 2, you're getting the great sunlight and you're getting vitamin D, which is you know, a double whammy in terms of supporting health and well-being. That is a health hack you don't even need to think about, right? Be outside 15 minutes, improves your mental health, and you get the sunshine, vitamin D, perfect. Um, even looking at photos increases positivity, happiness, and emotional stability. So if you have photos around your workstation, um, you know, people that you love or of really wonderful scenic views, uh, again, design your... Um, space to support and uplift you. Things you don't even need to think about, but they are passive in nature and they automatically support and help help you. Uh, meditation and prayer. You know, tons of research out showing how meditation and prayer can be really uplifting and really great for anxiety, depression, um, and connecting to what's going on inside, right? Outside environment can be crazy, chaotic, but if inside we are organized and we are at a level of coherence, then it doesn't matter what's going on, right? We got to take care of us. And the big thing, community is so huge, right? Research is showing the worst stress of all stresses. I mean, you think of worst case scenario stress, right? What's worse than that is isolation and lack of community. So when you connect with people, when you smile, right? Smile with your eyes right now. When you smile, when you connect, when you wave, when you make a phone call to reach out to somebody you haven't you know, connected with in, in a while or, or you text them, you email, send a note, you connect with people that pays dividends in terms of you know, the neurological response you get within the body, but also, um, helping with all the stress you're experiencing around you, right? Connect with people. Uh, let me see, time-wise, I think we're doing pretty good. So food, food's a big one. And really it's understanding what you want versus what you need, right? Uh, and I think it's always important to first figure out what it is that you are eating. Um, a lot of times when I am in conversation with folks and they, we're having this conversation, it is, well, what are you eating to start, right? And when we start tracking our food, it can help lose weight and keep it off, right? If you're looking at, you know, goal of, of weight loss, but keeping a food journal and tracking the foods that you're eating, the times that you're eating it, if you're experiencing any type of symptoms, whether it's indigestion or, um, you know, even headaches, or you notice a skin response, right? tracking your food in a food journal, the times that you're eating it and, you know, associated symptoms that may relate or may not, um, that is, can be huge to start understanding what it is you're eating and creating space for eating healthier or more nutrient dense foods. And there's really great apps out there to help you. Uh, one that I like is my fitness pal app. There's a free one. Uh, and of course there's, you know, there's one with more bells and whistles that'll cost you, but super easy to either carry a journal around or if phones are easier for you, you know, download an app. And I think we all know what's not good for us, right? So, I mean, I say throw out the junk, um, but understand less is more. So, you know, sometimes I'd like to think about it is choose this instead of that. Right. So if you tend to go for, I don't know, the chocolate bars um, at the end of the night, right? What can you replace 
those chocolate bars with. Or maybe you just say, I'm gonna have one of these and then after that I'm having carrots or whatever it may be. But again, how can you replace your, um, how can you replace the junk really and start to choose better foods? And here's a big health hack. Don't drink your calories, right? Sodas, teas, alcohol, even uh, drinks with zero calories are increasingly linked to weight gain through artificial sweeteners. So just by choosing water or um, infusing your waters with fruits um, or lemon, right? That can make a big difference, especially if you're a so soda drinker or a tea drinker, right? Or an alcohol drinker. Um, you're doing one, two, three of those a day. You cut those out, you're losing a lot. So how can you substitute something that's healthier? or choose less. Use smaller plates. So, you know, if you have a smaller plate, you tend to eat less because you don't intake as much because you're not filling your plate up. Um, by just turning off the TV or computer or setting your phone away, um, people aren't overeating or not necessarily making poor food choices. So just being present while eating is a major food hack and it seems like a no brainer. But you make different choices when you're present. Smaller plate, don't have the distraction, and then slowing down, chew your food. You know, most foods take about 20 minutes to digest and then pause before eating seconds. And actually, let's go back to chewing food. I mean, that is the first um, step in digestion. When you start chewing your food, you secrete an enzyme called amylase. And amylase is really important to start breaking down that food. And so if you don't chew your food very well, um, you know, you're not really starting that digestive process up appropriately. I think we're getting pretty dang close to, you know, time. So I'll run through this pretty quickly, but the last one is really um, finances. And a lot of times I think people don't really know how much they're spending on um, a monthly basis. And so, you know, just paying cash versus credit to really, First, understand where your money's going, but secondly, to really help you decide how important is it, right? It's easy to spend money when it's credit um, and those small items can get add up over time or we don't even know where that money is going. So when we look at just having a cash budget on a monthly basis and really identify things as far as what are you buying and how important is it? You know, save money weekly at some level. Um, I've heard that, you know, if you can survive on 80 cents on the dollar and put that 20 cents away, that can pay dividends. Um, to the, you know, so if you're saving on a weekly basis, even if it's $20, right? $20 every week, just get my calculator out here. If you're saving $20 every week, You know, you've saved over a thousand dollars in, you know, a year. Times that by thirty years, you're talking, you know, over thirty grand. So, and you may start off with twenty dollars, but you can build on that as, you know, you can add forty dollars or fifty dollars. It'll build over time. Um, pay to reduce your debts even a little extra, so you can have your minimal payments and then add to those minimal payments. Um, there are some great people out there who can really dive into these details. Um, you know, I just think it's a big part of, uh, life is looking at the finance, financial categories and understand there's things that you can do. And first knowing what you're spending is a big one for most people. So prioritize spending on what produces the most valuable return, right? Um, so what is going to... A lot of times I look at, you know, organic food, it is expensive. There's no question. Um, there is a premium on eating healthier, but what happens when you eat healthier, right? You're investing in your health. So when you are healthier, you are more productive. You're able to do the things that allow you to um, be more productive at work, show up, not sick as often, you know, that produces a more valuable return. So really looking at what are you investing your dollars in, but what's the return on that? Save up for things that matter most and be ahead on paying taxes. Um, 
you know, I can give you some great financial folks or some books if you want to dive into those. Um, but again, I'm looking at this as what are the hacks that you can do on a regular basis that will produce health and well-being down the road and finances can play a role with that. So, so my question for you is, are you ready to experience health and vitality? Because when it comes to choosing anything with intention, consistency is key. What you do consistently over and over and over. I mean, look in the mirror. That is, if you look at yourself, look at how you're moving, how you're holding yourself, right? How your body functions. That is a direct result of what you've been choosing to do consistently. And if you've got any type of postural distortions, if you're holding any type of stress, um, if you've got restriction through your system, if you are not in a state of ease, then something you're doing has got to change. Okay, you need to change the choices you're making and start implementing different things, right? Life is full. There's so many wonderful things out there um, that you can start creating shortcuts to support your overall health and well-being. But life can get chaotic and distracting and you know, road bumps pop up. So that's where when you are intentional about it, you can create and support you know, a lot of wonderful things. So if you're ready to make a change in your health and life, the time is now and we are here to support you. Um, so if you have any questions, you know, come, in, come with them into the office. I'd love to hear what uh, health hack you're going to adopt. Um, and know that when you adopt it and it becomes a, you know, a habit, hey, it's routine, it's there. And then you can add some, add some more in. It's what you cumulatively do over time. It builds up, it builds health. 20 years from now, talking about a different person. So I love and appreciate you. So grateful that you are here with me on this journey. Know that I am working on the things just like you are working on the things. I want to be my best self, just like I want that for you. I am here to hold you accountable and, uh, you know, be a partner in health. So I will see you next time and uh, look forward to that. Bye.